hello everyone before we uh, draw a simple flowchart first of all you need to know the flowchart symbols and you also need to know what a variable is last day you went through the symbols we'll just quickly go through it looking at your powerpoint presentation you refer to your notes and also look at this uh, topic flowchart symbols I have, a I have the textbook with me here on page 79 and I'm referring to that but you as a student you need to refer to your PowerPoint presentation. Underline the definition of a flowchart. In this set of notes that I have there are two definitions. Whichever is easy for you, you can write that if it comes in the exam. Basically it's telling you that a flowchart is a diagrammatic form of a program so when you draw a flowchart you'll be able to figure out what the program is actually doing or how the program is working okay before uh, we draw we go through variables we'll just briefly go through the symbols the first uh, symbol that we have on this uh, table is begin and end okay things you should note about begin and end is the begin is the one you will have right at the top of the flowchart and end is the last thing that you have in the flowchart so you will not have begin slash end at the top and the bottom you will have begin at the top with that symbol which is an oval shape and end at the bottom or the last thing of the flowchart with a symbol that is displayed there which is an oval okay next one process this symbol the rectangle symbol this is used when you need to do calculations or calculations need to be performed or when you are assigning a value so this process symbol basically tells you that the computer is doing all the processing or is cal is doing the calculations for you as a user so you are like pressing the button and the button that you're pressing here is in the form of a rectangle that's in general sense eh? So once you draw a rectangle that should tell you that okay the computer is going to do this calculation or is going to work on this not you as the user it's the computer or the program that you're designing next symbol that we have is the parallelogram this symbol you use when you need to ask the user to input any data or you want the computer to input uh, data or you assigning a not assigning basically whatever you need to input into the program and output is whatever that is displayed or whatever you want the user to see decision is when you make the program decide on a certain um, answer looking at the notes it says indicates a question that can be answered a yes or no or true or false for example if um, you set a criteria and then you have yes on the left and right on the and right you have no then whichever criteria it meets or does not meet it will display whatever information that you give in a parallelogram don't worry class we'll go through this shortly so don't be confused with that connector you use you only use connector when you have a decision so connect and a decision it it is linked to each other so whenever you have a decision you must note that there should be a connector somewhere and this is used to determine lengthy flow chart flow lines then indicates that one symbol is connected to another flow lines this is very important because without the flow lines you will not know where the program is leading to so 
it indicates the order in which operation should be performed and loop this is not frequently used but you need to know what a loop is and it indicates the statement that is needed to be repeated so you only use this when you need to repeat things so these are just the uh, common new used symbols but the symbols that we'll be using in the first example are the first three with the flow lines so i hope you uh, you have a uh, recap on your notes last year on these symbols and you are ready to do the flow charts with me okay okay next is variables I want you to refer to your notes on variables and they are basically memory locations that hold data that can be changed during project executions like I said I'm using the textbook so you, if you have the textbook with you you can go to page 95 but I recommend you go through your PowerPoint presentation and just underline wherever you have the definition for variables okay you must be wondering what that basically means Okay, imagine these two boxes are variables. They are memory locations that help in the project execution and they are located in memory. So when you think of these two boxes, you can also think of your containers, your school bags, your pencil case, wh whatever you have that stores things. So let's label it variables. Variables can be in a form of characters, words, it can be in text and numbers but in this example I'll just use letters A and B why do we use variables okay for example when we have a program that calculates the sum of two numbers and I use uh, enters 5 and 3 these are two numbers so when we use uh, enters 5 the first entry it is stored in the variable a for example you see that 5 and you put it in a a meaning like a container so think of 5 as a biscuit okay you put that biscuit in the container a and you think of this 3 as um, another biscuit and you put it in the container B imagine if there were no variables if there are no variables then where do you think the 5 and 3 will go that's the question where will it go it will be just floating around and then when you run that program program will give an error meaning the program will say where where are these numbers stored or where is the variables for these numbers or there is no va variable allocated for the numbers That's why class it's very important to have variables without them your program will always have errors and later on you'll find out what type of error it is syntax or logic error even runtime run error another example I can give you is just wrap off these five and three and uh, <coughs> I said eh, earlier that uh, this program calculates the sum of two numbers so if a user enters 2 and the user enters 4 these are two numbers where do you think the sum will go that's uh, another question to think about there is no variable allocated for the sum so you we need to create another variable meaning another box or another memory location and in this example I'll label it C so the sum will go in this variable C and the sum for 4 and 6 is 4 and 2 sorry is 6 so it will display 6 and that 6 is stored in the variable 
see i hope you understand what i just mentioned or just went through so let's just do a simple flow chart in regards to this example i just gave you okay let's look at this simple program or flow chart sorry of all the example that we were, went through when we were talking about when i was talking about variables okay this is a flow chart that accepts two numbers and the sum is calculated and then the sum is displayed okay like i went said during the flowchart symbols explanation that the beginning must be at the top and the end must be at the bottom or the last thing in this flowchart so the first thing should be begin and the last thing should be end and you must note that the symbol should be a oval shape my shape is not that oval but you must draw it in an oval shape and in that oval shape you must have the words begin and end without those words your flowchart will be wrong okay once you once you have the begin and you know that there should be an end then you must have a flow line this means that the program has started and what will the program do now okay i said earlier that this program accepts two numbers and in order to do that this is a simple way of saying it or doing it you can either put input a and b a comma b or you can have enter enter two numbers and then you have these variables a and b can have enter two numbers then you can have in brackets a b but input a comma b is much more simpler but if the um, question says that it needs to be user friendly then this is recommended enter two numbers a comma b okay then with those two numbers we have to calculate not we the program has to calculate sum of the numbers and well, like i said earlier you need whenever the program is asked to calculate or the computer is asked to calculate you need to have this symbol which is a rectangle or and that rectangle which tells you that before that sorry you need to have the flow line rectangle will tell you that okay the computer is going to do some calculations and in this case the calculation is sum so you need a plus sign there a plus b and it will be equal to sum looking at these variables how many variables do you think there are let's go through it one variable is a another is b and another is sum because all these three variables need to be contained somewhere if it is not contained anywhere then we cannot the program cannot display the sum so next is the flow line again then you have a parallelogram like uh, we went through earlier parallelogram is for input slash output and the first parallelogram that we had this first one it is for input and this second one is for output i usually recommend students to write display whatever you want to display instead of writing output so you display the sum so whatever sum is and shown here it will be displayed in the parallelogram that's that's all the program has to do and then when you have the flow line 
that tells you that the program has ended so this flowchart basically tells us that as soon as you start the program the f begin flowchart begin uh, flow chart symbol starts then when the program is running first the program will ask to input two numbers then the program will calculate the sum then the program will display the sum then the program will end this is what we call a anyone can tell me what type of flow chart is this the one that just starts from the beginning and ends at the end there is no decisions in between there is no uh, loop this is called what 